This is the Coahuilan box turtle, Terrapin Coahuila, also known as the aquatic box turtle, and they're considered to be one of, if not the most unique members of the Terrapin genus. They're called the aquatic box turtle because these guys spend a great deal of time in water, more so than other box turtle species. They are restricted to the Cuatro Cinegas wetlands in Coahuila, Mexico, and they're currently considered one of the top 50 most endangered colonians on the planet. Coahuilan box turtles are a close relative to the common box turtle, Terrapin carolina, but because they spend a great deal of time in the water, they have a body type that is highly adapted to an aquatic environment. The head is narrow and small in comparison to some other box turtles. Uh, they have reticulation on the sides of the head. In wild specimens, this is a little bit more noticeable. They generally have an oval body shape with minimal flaring of the rear marginal scutes. And they do, of course, have that classic hinge on the plastron that allows them to close up tightly. The eye also shows some reticulation and is generally yellow or green in color, whereas in other box turtle types, males will have a bright red iris and females can have an array of yellow, brown, or even green. So these guys are fully grown at between 14 and 17 centimeters respectively, and sexing them is similar to other box turtles. Uh, males, like this guy right here on the end, will have a concave plastron larger head and uh, compared to females with darker coloration he'll also have a longer thicker tail and his rear legs will be long to the point where they don't even look like they fit his body females which are typically the smaller of the sexes will exhibit a level or flat plastron but some do have some degree of concavity their heads are smaller the tail is extremely small with the vent closer to the plastron this species is able to effortlessly blend into their surroundings thanks to their coloration. They can go almost undetected, both on land and in the water. Hatchlings, however, are colored a brilliant green, sometimes almost bluish tone color on the carapace with reticulating lines and blotches. But this fades with age. So this species is highly endangered, mainly because one, they're restricted to just the Cuatro Cinegas Basin in Mexico, and two, because of the fact that the Cuatro Cinegas Basin has been so altered by human encroachment over the years. Uh, reports suggest that this species has as few as only 2,500 adult individuals total still in the wild today. Despite their critical status in nature, we found them to be very robust, hardy, and even personable in captivity. Here in southern coastal New Jersey, we like to keep them outside from April to October, uh, weather dependent each year, but the species is actually capable of handling temperatures as low as the 40s, night or day. Being native to the desert springs of the Quattro Senegas, sunlight is extremely important to the Coahuilan box turtle. We've chosen a very sunlit area in the yard to construct their outdoor unit, and they're equipped with both water and land. The turtles will utilize both water and land but spend anywhere between 80 and 90% of their time in the water. The water area is choked out with various grasses and other vegetation, offering the turtles optimal areas to seek shelter and feel secure. Rotting logs, driftwood, and other decor help to add other refuge and really just make the enclosure look as naturalistic as possible. When given ample space and an appropriate habitat, Coahuilan box turtles will act much like they do in the wild. When they spend time in the water, they're not necessarily swimming around like other species such as painted turtles, but they will actually create burrows into the mud and sand, just like we see here. Sandy soil with succulents and other grasses also mimic their wild area. And for nesting females, they can easily dig their shallow depressions into the ground when nesting season comes. The walls of the outdoor enclosure are made out of pressure treated planks, usually measuring anywhere between 10 and 12 feet long, and 12 inches high. One is halfway buried into the ground and others are piled on top of it to make it anywhere between 18 and 24 inches tall. A shelf or lip can be installed on top to prevent the turtles from climbing out. 
Outdoor electric fences are fitted on every enclosure here and can be upwards of 10,000 volts to help keep predators out. This in combination with other methods such as dogs, motion sensors, several camera systems, traps, and sonic devices really help to keep the turtles safe at all times. Terrapin Quahila has a diet that is not unlike other box turtle species, but we have found them to be primarily carnivorous, more so than other box turtles. Uh, they take well to newborn mice, whole-skinned mice, earthworms, slugs, snails, pretty much anything that'll move. Uh, in terms of fruit and vegetable matter, they're a little bit reluctant, uh, but they will take strawberry and banana, uh, papaya and mango. Um, some good commercial diets are Missouri, we have success with that, and certain brands of dog food in moderation have proven to be okay for them as well. When feeding things like newborn mice, we like to use tongs so that we can make it as though the mouse is moving since we only feed frozen thawed. When making a mash for them out of things like ground turkey, sweet potato, and vitamin powder or calcium powder, we'll just serve it on some small plates for them on the land and they'll come up out of the water and help themselves to it. Terrapin Quahila is capable of eating on both land and water. And when we're feeding commercial diets such as pellets, we can throw them in the water and they'll eat them just like an aquatic turtle would, or we can throw them on the ground dry and they'll sometimes drag them into the water to consume them. These guys are also rather aggressive, especially during feeding time. You can see here an older female and a younger female fighting over a newborn mouse. Box turtles are commonly associated as being diurnal only. However, we've actually seen that Quahelan box turtles will be active at night. Uh, as you can see here on one of our security cameras, this adult male was prowling the enclosure, probably looking for something to eat uh, when he stumbled across this camera. Male Quahelan box turtles are aggressive breeders, and they will take advantage of breeding at any given time during the year. Usually a peak in breeding activity may be reached when nighttime temperatures are cooler, but soar again during the day, also during rains. Males will seek out females, become completely relentless, and chase them until the female finds a place to hide. This is why areas of refuge, both indoors and out, are extremely important to keep females from getting overly stressed. In our experience, Quahelan box turtle females choose to nest June through September. Females leave the water, usually sometime between the hours of 4 and 6 p.m., and begin searching out a suitable nesting area throughout the enclosure. Once the sun has gone down, the female picks an area that she can easily excavate. This is why a sandy soil is important. She may be at this for several hours, and we've had them go as late as 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. She digs a shallow, flask-shaped depression in the ground with her rear legs and deposits between 4 and 7 eggs. The eggs are elliptical and leathery. Because this species chooses to nest overnight, we use cameras to enable us to see where they're actually digging their nests. Without them, we may never discover them again because once the female is done depositing the eggs, she covers the entire nest with her rear limbs and it can be undetectable to the naked eye. Once the nesting location has been located and the female is done, we carefully remove the eggs for artificial incubation. The nest is dug up by hand and each egg is carefully removed. They're then placed inside deli containers with air holes on moist vermiculite. The eggs are marked with the species and the date so we know when to expect them to hatch and so we also know what the top of the egg is to avoid turning them later on. At temperatures of between 84 and 88 degrees Fahrenheit, baby Quahelan box turtles hatch at anywhere between 55 and 65 days. Once the babies have hatched, they spend about a week inside the incubator where they can stay safe, warm, and carefully absorb their yolk sacs that they're born with. 
Once the sac is completely absorbed, they're moved to our external turtle and tortoise building where we can begin rearing them. We start the babies in small plastic sweater boxes, such as these, add about half of an inch of water and a piece of cork bark. This is then placed inside another container, such as a vision cage, or in this case, a herp cage, and the acrylic door is closed. There's ventilation at the back and sides, a UV strip light is placed on top, and inside the babies are subjected to temperatures in the mid to high 80s and a constant 80 to 90% humidity. The hatchlings are started on various pellets, also bloodworms, cut up earthworms, mice parts, chicken, beef heart, and ground turkey meat with vitamin and calcium powder added once a week. The babies grow rather fast and soon are able to go into larger units such as these with basking lights, again UV, various fake plants, rocks, and cork bark. Quahelan box turtles are capable of withstanding some pretty cold temperatures, but it's uncertain just how cold they can take it or for how long. Because we live in the Northeast and we can be subjected to pretty harsh winters, we choose to bring our animals indoors around mid-October or when the nighttime temperatures are dropping down to the low 40s pretty consistently. They'll then spend the winters indoors and then go back outside come April or when the nighttime temperatures are back up into the lower 50s. Indoor housing doesn't need to be anything elaborate. Rubbermaid containers, county line stock tanks, waterland tubs, and even large plastic totes are all suitable for Quahelan box turtles because they can hold water. I recommend giving the animals six to eight inches of water, especially if you're housing males and females together, and this is because males are very capable of drowning females during breeding attempts. Adding rocks, logs, and plants, whether they're fake or live, can help the turtles have areas to hide and also give them something to grasp onto. A basking area can easily be constructed out of bed crate and PVC tubes. Indoors, we don't give our turtles any UVB lighting because they're subjected to the natural sun at least half of the year. Instead, we give them basking lights of between 100 and 160 watts. This way the turtles can warm up, reach a desired temperature, and resume normal activities such as eating and even breeding. The Quahelan box turtle is without a doubt one of the most peculiar and fascinating species on our planet. Their behavior and their appearance is a constant reminder that they are in fact a member of one of the most beloved groups of turtles out there, the American box turtles. This is a species that we are very passionate about. We stay involved with them on several levels, like participating in the American Zoos and Aquarium Species Survival Program. Their critical status in nature is alarming, so we also stay in contact with biologists and researchers to help share experiences for head starting programs and other methods of saving them, such as hydrology improvement. Terrapine Quahila sits on the brink of possible extinction during a very difficult time for turtles and tortoises altogether in today's world. It's the information that we generate through hands-on experience, responsible keeping, and field research that one day just might lift them out of such an uncertain future.